Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 3 of The Writer's Wardrobe. We are brought to you today by nobody because we don't have any sponsors. Or viewers, for that matter. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. It's actually been brought to my attention that we do have sponsors, so I've had to amend this and say this episode is actually brought to you by five patrons who have joined me over at patreon.com forward slash L Lutnak. It is L for Loomis Lutnak. That's patreon.com forward slash triple L Lutnak. I'm your host, Loomis Lutnak, and I'm here with another special guest star. Say hello, Judda. All right. Now, Judda was a farmer, is that correct? Before the Duke and his taxmen took it off me? Right, that's a shame. More than a shame, Lou, it was my life. It was the life of my family. Of course, I apologise. After your family lost the farm, what then? Well, for a long time I worked alongside my brother Cole. Cole the blacksmith. Aye, that's him, big fellow, funny way of speaking. And you were his apprentice? No, I was the tanner's assistant, you might say. I thought he was a blacksmith. He was primarily a blacksmith, but the army had blackmailed him into serving as a tanner as well. That must have been hard. So hard on the poor fellow. And he could hardly supply enough piss on his own, know what I mean? Piss like urine. Just so, just so. And so, every morning, the family and I would pitch in and piss in the bucket, which we then sold to Cole so that he could get on with the tannin and the blacksmithing. Delightful. It's not particularly, but it does help to turn the hide into leather. And helps especially making all the hair fall out of the skin. And that's how your family earned money. Aye. Sometimes the kids ran errands for the townsfolk, letters and things like that. There was always this one fellow I remember, sitting by the river, shouting that the king washes his royal arse in the river and drinking or washing in it was as good as poison. I can't see how. I didn't have the heart to tell him that he was sitting on the northern end of the city on a river that ran south, and we had a duke, not a king. Anything that touched that bastard's ass went straight into the ocean, the castle being at the southern end of town and all. Anyway, speaking of asses, the only other work I could get was in the sewers. The sewers? Aye, the sewers. Any leaks or problems with the grates and they'd send me in to fix them up. Good money, that, but jobs only came around every so often, so selling pots of gold was the one we relied on. Problems with the grates? Aye. More often than not, it was a corpse or something blocking the waterway. One time it was a big bag of golden coins. That must have been a great help. I say it might have been if I hadn't been robbed as soon as I made it back to the surface. A couple of bandits had been expecting it, they had. You were robbed? Yes, and I don't want to talk about it. Fair enough. So what about this blackmail business they'd forced your brother into? They were forcing him to make armour for the army. On the sheep, you know. Paying him a pittance. I was fed up with it on his behalf. He was fed up with it too, but he's more restrained than I. What did they have on him? You know, he never actually told me, but I knew it was bad. Cole was so riled up that he began turning leather into a fireproof suit. Fireproof? Aye, and he had to make it fast, so he made it small enough to fit me. You wore the armour. Toward the end, aye, he'd rigged it up with a barrel of oil and a bellows so it had a mobile flamethrower on it. Am I allowed to say that? I'll stop you if you get into spoiler territory. Well, as you know, the suit was a huge success, worked flawlessly the second time. And the first time? Well, Cole hadn't finished sealing it all when the soldiers took it off him. It sort of exploded when they tried to use it on him. Fire and oil is a dangerous combination. Aye, and used in anything but the hands of a professional can be deadly. And do you consider yourself a professional? Oh, aye. I definitely have the most experience in it. I wore it for the entire third act, remember? I remember you burnt down the city I'd been building for two novels. What? What? You said you'd been building the city. Yes. I thought you were just ascribed to the events of the world. Well, yes, that too. Technically, my characters never do as they're told, they just do things. So you could have stopped it. Now, Judda, I told you, nobody does what I say. I'm more of a scribe. You could have saved them. I couldn't. Those events were already in motion. You set them in motion. I just made the world, Judda. I didn't make You the... bastard! Get off! Get off! You killed them all! This has been the writer's wardrobe.